Hello and welcome to Behind the Lines. I'm Diane Dayton. Today we're going to talk about the Columbia Animal Shelter. And with us right now, we have the Executive Director, Tammy Jalbert. And we also have the shelter veterinarian. We have Dr. Nikki Waltmeyer. Thank you for being here. And who do we have? This is Karma. Karma's three years old. She's one of our longer residents and a little sassy, but um, here to to show off. Yeah, and she's got some attitude, which she is does. great. Yes, <laughs> or catitude, right? Yes, catitude, yes. <laughs> so the Columbia Animal Shelter was being constructed in 2018, but opened your doors in 2019. Is that correct? That is correct. All right, so yes. tell us what your mission statement is, Tammy. Well, our mission is to help uh, rehome animals that have come in off the street and uh, get them all ready to go back out into the uh, you know, into the community that, and as long as they're spayed and neutered and they can either go back into the community if we're doing TNR or they can come in and hopefully get a forever home yeah. with some great adopters. Oh yeah and I think over the years we were talking a little bit earlier exactly how many I guess cats that have gone through there since the beginning. It's what, 1,200? We've had over 1,200 adoptions, yes. Wow, I think that's great. Thank you. So we're talking about rescuing and rehoming at risk command companion animals such as cats, right? That's correct. So there, your, your intake is what, Columbia, is that correct? Our intake is Columbia only right now due to the fact that there's such a large population of yeah. cats in Columbia. Yeah, and what you're trying to do is rehome them, but then also the uh, spaying and neutering is so key, right, yes. Dr. Nikki? Super important. So we do work um, with the we do work with the Columbia Cat Action Team, and there are local TNR trap neuter return, and um, our goal there is to get some of these cats, whether they're feral cats, community cats, or stray cats, bring them in, fix them. Um, get them a couple vaccines and get them back out if they're content being outside, they're content being outside. Those that um, might be better suited for a home, we will try to find homes for, but we're trying to basically educate the local community that it's okay to have a feral cat, community cat, as long as it's fixed and not making babies. Right, and that's how we control the population, and that's how we become a more humane community, which I believe is really your ultimate goal. So yes. how do we even describe humane community, where we take care of each other and the, the animals that live in our community? Is that right, Tammy? It is, and I think that the challenge, one of the things that, that see cat for short, and uh, Dr. Nikki and I are working on all of us together is going out into the community and trying to educate them on what it's okay to have a friendly stray and where the community um, colonies are, mm -hmm. right? We're actually working with the borough too, but they have an overlay system, which is wonderful, where we can map out where those colonies are within Columbia mm -hmm. and who's feeding them and you know what that looks like. So we can go in and make sure all of the cats within that colony are spayed or neutered, they're ear tipped, they've got their basic vaccines, right? So we can kind of keep track of, of how that looks wow. for Columbia and start to reduce the population of, um, you know, stray cats making more cats. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, within our community. And so. that's where we all need to be active participants and responsible for right. this. So how many cats are in one of these colonies? Or is, I guess it really varies, doesn't it? It does vary. It varies. And they've just started, sea cats just started within the last year or so, actually doing like a grid overlay of like actually Columbia Borough for those that are um, for those people that are feeding a colony or caring right. for a colony that they can register their colony with the borough and then we can kind of keep track on where that colony is, who takes care of it, how many cats are there. Um, so that's kind of a work in progress. Okay. Um, but I mean some people might just have a couple cats in the area. Some people if they're on a farm could have you know 10, 15 <laughs> more. Right. Could, but at least we know they're registered, they're they're spayed, they're neutered, they're up to date on their vaccines, all those things. And they're they're content and they're happy. And it's okay. Not every yes. stray wants to be inside. Right. And not every stray that comes into the shelter, the shelter's not the best place for every stray. Okay. Right? And so that's where our education comes in. 
Yeah. So let's talk about the education because you actually go around and do programs in schools. Yeah. Is that right, Dr. Yeah. Nikki? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So a lot of people when they're young, they you know want to be a veterinarian. It's the best job. You get to work with animals, and, and that's true. However, um, it's also getting out there to you know educate how to take care of your pet, health care for your pet, but then also ways that you can be an advocate for animals and other careers, whether it's you know animal control, 4-H, working with a shelter, being an executive director. So there's so many ways that you can be an animal advocate. Um, and I'll take my dog with me, Rosalie, she's a St. Bernard, and we'll go in and kind of how to do a physical exam and um, why vaccines are important and then questions. And depending on the age of the kids, it's sometimes a free-for-all or sometimes it's more structured. Okay. So the age span is what to what when you're doing these We've programs? We've done, Rosalie and I have done preschool. Okay. Um, so like three years old and we've done after school programs, um, ninth and 10th grade. Okay. So anything. Yeah, it really varies. So if someone wants to have this program in the school, how long is the actual program? That's up to whoever is hosting said okay. program. So um, for example, we might get a call from like a Girl Scout troop that's doing um, a badge for, you know, some type of like career. And do we want to go and talk about being a veterinarian? Okay. Um, I've done girl camps kind of or, over the summer where just, you know, kind of basically promoting the sciences for young girls okay. as well. So. All right, so if we want to reach out, we just contact you yeah. at the Columbia Animal Shelter. That's correct. And we do have ColumbiaAnimalShelter.com, real basic. <laughs> but you also have Pretty a- easy to remember. Yeah, it really is easy to remember. You also have a social media presence too, don't you? We do, we are on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Okay. So you can reach us we at can, all of those locations. You can come and see us. We're open six days a week to the public. Right, and you're right there in Columbia. Right so here in Columbia. We just do a Google search. You'll pop up all over the place, we right? Will. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the other things, too, is that you offer low-cost wellness clinics as well as spay and neuter clinics. Yes. So tell us what a wellness clinic is involved with. Sure. So I'll, can I give you a little backstory? Absolutely. For, okay. So when we opened the shelter in 2019, our five-year goal um, was within the five years to have a low-cost wellness clinic as well as that spay and neuter clinic. The spay and neuter clinic, we got open right away. Uh, and then within the three-year time frame, we started the, uh, the wellness clinic as well. So we were very happy to be able to expedite that, that process of what a, a low-cost wellness clinic too, because there's such a need for it mm -hmm. within the community. And one of the things that we want to do is, is reach as many, you know, people as we can and help them with affordable health care right. for their pets. And so then I'll, I'll let yeah. you take it from yeah. there. Yeah, so um, I've actually worked in general practice for several years before you pulled me into the shelter world. <laughs> and, um, you know, the cost of pet care is rising. Mm -hmm. And that doesn't necessarily mean that a family shouldn't be able to have a pet. Um, and so with our low-cost wellness clinic, I'm still a veterinarian. Um, I'll do a physical exam. We can do vaccines. We can talk about what, you know, preventative care plan looks like for your pet. I always tell people that prevention's easier, safer, and cheaper. So if we can kind of what is going to work best for your pet and what works best for your budget as mm -hmm. well, and we'll do the best that, that, that we can. We're clinic. We're not a hospital. Um, so we need to keep that in mind. Yes, for sure. So basically just the intake with animals is Columbia, but these services are open to anybody with yes. animals, correct? Yeah. Yes, anyone with animals. When we do adoptions, you can adopt from any, we've had adoptions from Maryland, from New York, from New Hampshire. Okay. From, you know, people will see it and some people just really enjoy our shelter. They look online and they say it looks amazing. It, it does. It looks so clean. It, you know, all of those things and they come down and they fall in love with someone yes. or they fall in love with them online, right? right? They see them on the adoptapet.com okay. and where all of our adoptable pets are. Yeah. And uh, they come in and they see them and, and we're like, do you have local shelters? They're like, yes, but we love yours. Oh, that's Which great. is wonderful. That is, that's just music to our ears. It is very welcoming because you have these uh, different areas for males, 
females and juveniles, yes. right? Yes. yes. And then you have outdoor access, which I think is really good too within, uh, obviously caged in, but they can yes. get fresh air and yes. I think that's really wonderful. So something that you're doing end of February 2024 is then offering low cost dental services. I think that's amazing, that's key. It is key. We've been working on getting, we had to raise the funds to get the, the dental equipment. So we've done that over the last few years, but we were able to do that through all of the generous donations and fundraisers and everything. So now Dr. Nikki is in her element of excitement. So there are dentals to do and uh, we'll be offering that service at the end of the month. And okay. you can talk a little yeah. more about yep. that. Yeah, so we'll be offering, you know, not just a teeth cleaning dental, but actually oral surgery. There's so many animals um, that go to the vet. They have, you know, like oral health disease, teeth that need to come out, and that's painful. It's uncomfortable, and a lot of the times cost is an issue. So we're still offering that high-quality service um, at, you know, a, a lower cost for those that, that need it. And we hope to partner with the local community veterinarian so that way we get those that really do, um, these pets that really need to have their teeth taken care of um, and excited to get started on that. I think that's great. So one of the other things we're going to talk about after we take this break are all those wonderful fundraisers that you do because we need the money, but boy, you make it a lot of fun. So <laughs> stay with us. You want to find out about this. You're watching Lancaster Community TV, LCTV 66. Welcome back to Behind the Lines. We're talking about Columbia Animal Shelter along with Tammy, along with Dr. Nikki, and along with Karma sitting on Dr. Nikki's lap. So look at her. Isn't she, she's just what? Three years old? She's three years old. Um, she's been at the shelter since she was a young kitten. She came in with kittens and all her kittens found good homes and Karma's still there. She's got some sass. Um, she's got a little bit of arthritis. We're managing that. But if you allow Karma to be in charge, I think she will make an excellent, excellent pet. Okay. If you have a catio, even better because she loves to be in the catio at the shelter. Oh, that's what they're called, catios. Yeah, yes. Okay, that's that outdoor area. Yeah, it is. Uh -huh. She loves it. And now we've learned a new word. Okay. okay, so Karma is one of the cats and there's uh, quite a few there too. So make sure you stop by and look in all the different areas. So before we went to break, we were talking about all these wonderful wonderful fundraisers that you have coming up. Some are annual and some are also just kicking off this year. Right. So I think what you've been doing, you've been doing some line dancing, concert series, a car show and bingo. Expound on that, Tammy. We have done, uh, the line dancing has is really, really hot right now. It has, uh, we just have, <clears throat> I'm sorry, we just had line dancing this past Saturday evening and there were over 170 people there. Wow. For the line dancing and it's held in the warehouse right across the street. Okay. Uh, so that is a wonderful monthly uh, fundraiser for us as well. Um, we have a chopped event coming up in March. Yes, and we're going to get one. all those details. We're get yes. All those details. <laughs> Uh, we have a concert series the second Saturday of every month. Okay. And uh, so there's a variety of local and national bands that are um, that are coming in, and so that's exciting too. So stay tuned with our website to right. see who's playing when. Uh, so we have one this Saturday actually. Mm -hmm. um, so actually. I don't depending on when this airs, I guess. Well, be. we can just keep looking on the uh, website on and we'll website. find out. That's so true. yes, but the location is at 265 South 10th Street in Columbia. And a yes. lot of these things happen in that quadrant right around there. So it's really they easy do. to check out, right? They do. Our car show is held right there at the shelter <laughs> as well. That's the last Saturday in July. Okay. Uh, that's a huge fundraiser for us as well. Mm -hmm. Bingo will be this year in October at the fire hall okay. there in Columbia. Uh, so, and then um, golf tournament is going to be held this year too in May. Okay. So, we've and got a lot of exciting things coming yeah, up. Yeah, that's at Cross Gates, I understand, it is, right? Yes. That's a nice course, too. Yes, it is. It's a nice course and very good nice. restaurant there, too. Yes, yeah. <laughs> very nice. Okay. Tina's wonderful. She's been helping with the uh, with the menu for the day. Okay. So. Well, there's something coming up as a kickoff event this year, yes. which is called Chopped for charity. Yes. And tell us how this came about, Tammy. Well, it came about because I happened to be in uh, New Hampshire with my son and his wife, and they said, you want to go to a Chopped for Charity event? And I said, that sounds interesting. <laughs> what is this about? 
And I fortunately was able to, we just got sat with the, at the table with the people putting on the event. Okay. And they asked about me, and I said what I was there to kind of see and do. And they were wonderful at helping, and it was it's a wonderful event. It's a great fundraiser where chefs get up and they compete for 30 minutes. They make a dish with ingredients um, that they don't know about in a basket ahead right. of time. And uh, then we have four chefs that determine who the winner is based on that. And uh, during that time when you're, you know, when they're making their meals, we'll talk about the shelter and, and mm -hmm. how all of the donations for the evening are, are going to benefit the shelter okay. and, and what that goes to. So the kickoff this year yes. is on Saturday. It's March 30th, and it's at the fabulous John Wright Restaurant, which yes, I really love right there. What a beautiful view and that, what a great backdrop, too. Yes. And um, you have how many judges now, Tammy? We have four judges, or okay. we will have four judges. Okay. Three judges we'll pick ahead of time, yeah. which I think that you just might be one of them. I Diane. think I will be. <laughs> so that means I get to taste food. That's right. And enjoy the evening. You do. So the fourth judge is going to be picked, what, the night of? Is that the, right? The fourth judge will be auctioned the night of. Okay. So if you're really interested in being a judge, you can get your tickets. Tickets are $50. Okay. Um, they're available on Eventbrite. They also can be purchased uh, by contacting us at the shelter as well. Uh, and that includes dinner, mm -hmm. and uh, you can purchase drinks at, at the event as okay. well. And what time does the event start? It starts at 6 o'clock. Okay, it starts at 6 o'clock, so it's basically an evening event. Is there and any type of auction or things like that? There what will else be is a happening? live auction, too, where we will auction off some experiences. So one of the experiences that I know that we have is a wine tasting at the shelter. So there'll be a shelter experience where they can also do a tour of the shelter and oh, spend nice. time with the animals. And they'll be doing some wine tasting and you know charcuterie boards and things like oh, that. Oh, I don't there know. That, that sounds like a great combo It does, me. doesn't it? With, <laughs> and, with, with karma, yeah. Karma and, so, karma and the crew. Yeah, right? and one of them. And there will be some others, too, that are, that are being finalized. So. Okay, so it's all coming together, right? It is. It's all coming together. Yeah. It's very exciting. I think this is really exciting because this is the money that helps you do the programs that you do. It, it also helps with the care of the animals, too. It does. It does. The, uh, the cost of vaccines alone, all of our medications and things, have risen by at least 40% wow. over the last year, year and a half. And so... That's every, substantial. It is. It is substantial, and, and that's, you know, what people don't realize. Yes. You know, that, that it is costing more and more yeah. for, for us to offer the low cost as well. Mm -hmm. and we still want to provide that low cost service. Yeah. And uh, this is one of the ways to keep that a low-cost service, yeah. is to have these events. Yeah, it so. really is. So it takes a crew, it takes a village, it essentially, a right? Village. So how many people actually work there at the shelter? Well, we have six paid staff, and we have hundreds of volunteers. Okay. You can always use more volunteers. Always use more volunteers, So yes. please tell us what some of those duties are for a volunteer. They range from anything from litter boxes and scoop and poop yep, to that's... socializing. We have we have kittens and we write them on a board in our hallway that says, you know, if you have extra time, spend time with so and so. Spend time with karma. Spend yeah. time with, you know, whoever it is. Whichever kittens need a little extra mm -hmm. socialization, right? Right, because we want them to be social and be available for adoption and ready to go home, and and we want those adoptions to be successful. Okay. Um, so we have all those. They can help volunteer to help out at events. They, so they can do any. We have a number of them. We have a number of people who come in. Um, they'll do laundry. They clean. They do everything. They socialize. They do the events. They. What else can we have them do? They take pictures. We have oh, people okay. who help with marketing. We have. So I mean, we have a vast variety. We have people who do landscaping things in the summer. You know, it's just there's a wide variety. There's something for everybody if you want to be involved in the shelter itself. And talk about a good way to bring your family together if you want to have parents and children working together with yes. this and having teaching them yes. about pets. Yeah. Right, Dr. Nikki? Yeah, I believe so. You need to, if you're 14 years old, you can volunteer, but you need to have a parent with you. Right. Yes. Um, and that is awesome. Excuse me, I'll see that sometimes in like the evening when I'm there, uh, you know, 14, 15 year old come in with their parent and whether they're doing chores that I bet they're not scooping the litter box at home, yeah. but they'll do it at the shelter and they'll pet the cats or brush yeah. the cats. And I just think that's an awesome way to spend their time and yeah. family time too. Yeah, that really is. And Diane, one of the 
other things that we see and we notice is there are a lot of families who will bring kids in that are really shy oh, or wow. maybe they have trouble communicating or and they communicate with these animals and it is the it is the coolest thing to see yeah. it really puts goosebumps i bet it does mm -hmm. it's therapeutic it is on it's many really, levels right and we have many people who have said I, I'm not social. I'm not. I have anxiety. I have this. I have that. But it's hard for me to be in a public place, and they'll thank us for wow. providing them with that comfort level to be able to come in and volunteer somewhere. And animals are so non-judgmental. Yeah. They know. They have a sense about what you need. They sure and do. It's really neat to have to be a part of a place like okay. that. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about the hours that you may be open. Sure. What are they? So Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday 11 to 7, Friday is 11 to 5, and Saturday and Sunday are 11 to 3. Okay, so you're closed on Monday? We are closed to the public on okay. Monday. We're all still there. Well, because you've got stuff the, you've got to do. do. We need a day, so okay. yes. All right, to do that. But then also, would some of the volunteering be within those hours or out of the hours, or how does that the work? volunteers are there uh, 8 o'clock. They come in at 8 o'clock in the morning. A lot okay. of mornings are... We try to get our cleaning and things done um, before we open, okay, so that, that we're not. Sense. So it's you know, so we're not in the middle of cleaning yeah. while people are trying to visit. Right. Okay. Let's pull so. together some final thoughts, Dr. Yeah, Nikki. Sure. Just give me some final thoughts that we need to think about or remember with the Columbia Animal Shelter or just pet care in general. Yeah, I think like I said before, um, prevention is easier, safer, and cheaper. And I feel strongly that you know we all love animals. Most people love animals and they want a pet and um, it can be expensive but we're we're there and as long as we continue to do those fundraisers yes. um, we have the means that we can be a source for the local community and their pets because sadly some of these animals that are actually surrendered to the shelter the reason that they're surrendered is because they could not afford pet care mm -hmm. and so we're here we have a wellness clinic yes um, and and just just ask, just okay. contact us. All right. And we want to get everybody out to these fundraisers because yes. we're going to have a good time. And if you want to find out any other information, we just need to go where? ColumbiaAnimalShelter.com. That's easy enough. Thank you both for being yeah. here. Thank, Thank you, you for, for the good work that you do. Thank you. It's, Thank you. it's essential. Thank you for joining us today, too. I'm Diane Dayton with Behind the Lines, reminding you to look behind the lines. You might be surprised what you find.